I'm just talking with the saints. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this gorgeous Sunday morning. What a privilege it is to be in this place. Um, if you would all please sign the registration pad in the pew rack, let us know who we are, that we may greet you by name after worship if we don't already know you. Uh, today we're going to celebrate a couple of things. Um, book bag Sunday, if you brought a book bag, going back to school, bring them up, and then we'll, uh, we'll bless the book bags, and it's also Bible Sunday, we're giving out Bibles to, to our third graders, and so we, there's much to celebrate. Note in the bulletin a lot of things going on in the life of our church. In fact, we are, we are really starting to gear up for September. It's going to be a great thing. September 9th is Rally Sunday. In fact, we're going to have hot dogs between services, grilled on a grill, and hot dogs after worship, grilled on a grill. More importantly, though, Sunday school starts. And if you want to know what's going on with all the ministries of the church, all those are going to be showcased as well. And so a lot of good things. Uh, our youth is going to kick off with sun Sunday evening, 7 o'clock bonfire and games and all that kind of thing. And so there's a lot of good stuff happening. I will also invite those who are interested in joining our church. 
that on September 30th, we're going to be re receiving new members. And so if you'd like to uh, be a member of Fields United Methodist, let me know or give the office uh, a call and let us know by September 10th, if you would. Uh, beginning on September 9th, this worship will be starting at, at 11 o'clock as well. So put that on your calendar now. And if you would like to come to the mission picnic, when we, this is where we're going to decide where we are going to go on mission next year. That will be the week of June 26th of 2013. Uh, come, let me know or let Joe or Karen Carney know that you'll be attending. I think that's, a, that's about it. Blood uh, pressure check is next week between services, too. I'm sure you all have low blood pressure, but just in case, give it a check. Dave Gray. As a member of the Finance Committee, I've been asked to uh, discuss our finances, the church's finances. The numbers are in your bulletin, and they kind of speak for themselves. As we have been doing for most of the year, uh, we're ahead of budget. Our giving is ahead of budget. I think that's a glorious thing. And I think it's particularly notable that we are ahead of budget at this time of year. Uh, as you know, most of us uh, take vacations during the summer. There are a lot of us who, for whatever reason, have other activities. Uh, our attendance tends to, to drop off a little bit during the summer, so I think it's, it's glorious, and I thank God for all of us who continue to give when we're here, when we're not here, and I think that um, we have great things to look forward to during the fall as our membership uh, picks up again after the kids are back in school. So I just want to thank you all for your giving, for your conscious giving to this church, and uh, I just look forward to the fall and seeing this church continue to grow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. Okay, Larry, let's worship. All right. Well, this morning's call to worship comes from... Good morning, everyone. This morning's call to worship comes from my minister friend in Florida, Clarence Miller. Sometimes he wrote the, writes the most interesting and timely um, messages. And I just want to glean a little bit from something I got in the mail this morning. It says, on the night before he was crucified, Jesus observed the Passover feast with his disciples. Afterwards, they sang a hymn together as they made their way to the Mount of Olives. And uh, this is where the event occurred where he was captured and then went through the process of being tortured and crucified. And the writer of this devotion points out that Jesus, who knew that was coming, chose to worship while walking into trouble. There's great power in praise. When we direct our heart, our mind, and our voice to the Lord in our act of worship, it reconnects us with Him in a way like no other. Whether we feel like it or not, praise empowers and enables us to handle life's hardships, which is why we do well in worshiping the way that Jesus did. So as we, um, as we sing and worship this morning, let's keep this scripture in mind from Ephesians 5. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. So let's do that this morning. Let's stand and, and let's, uh, let's put our faith in our King of Kings. All right. If you confess the Lord, call him up. 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 If you believe in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, call him up. And tell him what you want. When darkness comes your way, your day, call him up. When darkness comes your way, call him up. He'll brighten up your day, call him up. If you believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, call him up. I 
yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart even though sometimes we stumble even though sometimes we fall call him up and tell him what you What are you sitting back down for? <laughs> Here we go. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. Lord, I said yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Well, I'm crushed but not crushed, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse. For his promise will endure, and his joy is going to be my strength. Oh, the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I say yes, Lord, yes, 
Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Let's do that again. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Well, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his joy is going to be my strength. Sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Let's do that again. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Amen. For the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. You may be seated. The first scripture for today is Psalm 111. It says, Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. So praise the word of the Lord. Praise God. Your name 
King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Alpha, Omega, Everlasting Father, Friend who sticks closer than a brother, Savior, Jesus. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder. Nothing has the power to save your name. your name but your name hallelujah hallelujah Uh, as Diane comes forward and we present our uh, third graders their Bibles and, and also the blessing of the book bags, I, I was sitting in the, in the pew here oh, thinking about the, what a joy it is to offer Bibles to kids. And, and this is our calling. And I was looking at Deuteronomy 6 and, and just wanted to uh, 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 fill you in on this a little bit. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I'm commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you're at home and when you're away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign to your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You know, when we give our kids Bibles, we are offering them a gift of the Word of God. And, and we are doing, as the, the Shema instructs us to do in Deuteronomy, to, re, to really give the next generation the Word of God. And so with that, Diane. Thank you. Good morning. Today is the continuation of a long-standing tradition here at Fields. This tradition involves giving the families of our third grade students the opportunity to present Bibles to their young people during a worship service. We also include older students who are new to our church who have not received a Bible. In so doing, we stress the importance that we place on reading and understanding the good book. In this presentation, Reverend Joyce will give a Bible to the family of each student. The family members will then present the Bible to their child, symbolizing how the church and families work together to help the child grow in faith and understanding of the Lord. Will the following students and family members who will be presenting the Bibles please come forward and remain standing at the front of the church until dismissed. Lauren Ferguson, Dylan McKeague, Emily Steinmetz, Matthew Steinmetz. Half of Field United Methodist Church. Here's Dylan's first Bible. Help him with it. Have fun with it. Mark and Sheila, this is Lauren's first Bible. 
Learn to have fun with us. You guys learn together the word of God. Receive the word of God, learn its stories, and study its words. We all rejoice in this step in your journey with God. And Dylan and Lauren, I'd like you to get finished reading that because there's going to be a test next Sunday. Yeah, so, school is starting. Why don't we give these students and their families a round of applause. And I was just kidding about the test. Thanks. We also have another tradition. As uh, most of us know, school will be starting next week or at the latest the week after. And it is um, the tradition of fields is to bless the book bags that, that the children will take to school. Or, and sometimes the teachers will bring book bags too because they're just as, uh, they need the blessing as well. And so those children going to school with their book bags, come on down. Come on down. Let the, come on, all the kids come on down, whether you have a book bag or not, because this is an important time. You got your school bag too, Kathy, huh? You left yours at home? When you go to school, don't forget your book bag, though. That's rule number one. Well, don't forget your lunch first. No, you don't want to forget your lunch, do you? No, I wouldn't. You're going to first grade? Who's all going to first grade here? Who's going to second? All right, who's going to third? Who's going to fourth? All right, who's going to fifth? He's going into high school. You're going into high school? All right, all right. Well, you might, you're going to preschool? That's okay, that's school too, because you're going to learn a lot of stuff, and Kathy's going to preschool as well. So that's good. So uh, I would like to, to pray over you and your book bags. How's that sound? So, so let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for these children. We give you thanks for the, the bags that, will, that they will be taking to school, Lord, with, full of books and full of uh, all kinds of things, Lord, that will teach them many things. Bless them and keep them, keep them strong, keep them safe. Uh, bless their parents, too, as they surround them in love, and, and bless their teachers, Lord. Uh, be with them now and always, and let them know that you love them more than anything else in the whole wide world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thanks for coming out this morning. I guess this can kind of be a children's sermon because... Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is, is spending time real wisely, and part of that is being in school to learn a lot of things, but you saw the younger kids get Bibles. Don't forget the Word of God when you go to school. And remember that God is always with you, and God will always protect you. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up here this morning. It's glad you're here, and remember September 9th in just two weeks, Sunday school starts. And so more school, but fun stuff. All right, you may be seated. Before we begin a time of, of, uh, of the pastoral prayer, uh, I've subscribed to a daily devotional called The Prime Time with God, and it always seems to be uh, the prime time when these things come through. And, and we prayed for our, our children. You see, we got a lot of children here to pray for. So uh, it's, it's the task of our congregation to pray for them. And, and, and so God can keep them strong. But I think the other, the other uh, group that we really need to pray for are our teachers. I know we have some teachers here that if they haven't already started preparing their classrooms, they, they will be tomorrow? No? Your classroom's done. Oh, the, these type... These type A's, <laughs> they're all done. But I wanted to offer this prayer for you. And, and, and as you listen to these words, that the whole congregation would also pray for you too. Uh, let us pray. Dear God, today we lift up all the teachers to you. We pray for their anointing upon their lives, their work, and their ministry. We pray you will give them wisdom, knowledge, guidance, patience, love, protection, 
understanding, insight, and everything they need to be a positive, life-changing influence upon those they teach. We pray this day you will keep them safe from all harm and evil. We pray you will bring to their minds the lessons and information they need to teach and the ability and skills to do what is good, right, and best in every situation. We pray that each one will not see their profession as, a, as in standing just as a job, but as an opportunity to make a difference in the lives and show your love to others. May they be salt and light in this world. May they rely on your strength and grace each and every day to accomplish that which you, would have, you have given them to do. Bless them, God, as your servants and children. And may they be a blessing to others and with whom they work and with whom they teach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, there are many blessings that surround us by day and throughout our lives. The blessings of new beginnings, the blessings of our children going back to school. I know Lori and I took Abby back on Friday with 4,000 others of her friends, and we see a lot of, a lot of people doing the same thing, so we, we continue to keep our college kids in our thoughts and prayers, too, as they begin uh, fresh or another new year, and, and keep parents in your prayers, too. And, and one of the things, and uh, not, not so you don't break the law, but watch those 20 mile an hour speed limits and slow down not because you don't want to get a speeding ticket but so you keep the kids safe within those school uh, school zones let's keep our children safe and let's pray for our kids and let's pray for our our children uh, there are there are many other joys you, you heard just some of the things that are happening in the fall there's a lot of new beginnings happening in in our church and and what a celebration it is and so we uh, we do want to celebrate those things but many things weigh heavy upon our thoughts and in our hearts as well if you notice on the prayer list there are an awful lot of people who have lost loved ones from our church in this last week these last two weeks actually and and those folks are in in, in certain need of our of our prayers and of our support this day it would also um, lift up these these folks as well Carol Miller's family. Uh, Carol is in hospice and probably in her final days with us and, and her family. And so please keep the Millers in your prayer, in your, in your thoughts and in your prayers. If you would also keep um, Roy uh, Van Vliet in your prayers, that is Liz Simmons' uh, brother. He'll be having surgery on August 31st and going through testing and everything now. So please keep Roy. and. Um, his family in your prayers. Also, Dan Laser, uh, one of Jan Stansfield's friends. And also keep Holly and Tom in your thoughts and prayers. Jeanette McKenzie's uh, uh, son and daughter-in-law, their teachers, and, and they're, they're, uh, they ask for prayers. Are there any other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? I have a uh, friend and coworker, Corey. Him and his wife, Jenna, are expecting their first child at the end of the year. Um, but they last week went for their 20-week checkup and were told that best case scenario, if they went through with the pregnancy, their child would only live for a couple of hours or days at most. So prayers for Corey and Jenna. Our prayers are with Corey and Jenna. Thank you. Are there others? I'd just like to express a joy that today is Bev and I's 45th anniversary. All right. <laughs> a friend of ours, uh, Bill Seabright, is having triple bypass surgery uh, tomorrow. Like to keep Bill and his family in our prayers. Prayers for Bill C. Bright. I just want to say Nick Modoc, who's married to Diane Modoc, that's a member here at the church. He's in the hospital, uh, possible kidney infection right now. They're not 
sure they're doing some tests, so if we can have some prayers for him. Prayers for Nick. And a joy for my husband's grandmother, who is turning 100 years old tomorrow. All right. I just wanted to introduce uh, Carol Ferguson's got sisters here from Iowa, and I wanted to have the same passage on the way back home. <laughs> Carol Ferguson's uh, sisters from Iowa, welcome. We have corn here, too, you know. <laughs> I would like to ask for travel mercies for Dean as he travels to Michigan this week, and for the two of us as we travel to Canada next Sunday. And also, prayers and praise for our Stephen ministers here at the church. Um, keep in mind the Stephen ministry program is alive and well here at our church. And if you have need or know of someone in your family or a friend outside of our congregation that could use a listening ear, please contact Tom or myself, and we'd be happy to set you up with a Stephen minister. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, that's an important and incredible program of the church, too. So if you need someone to talk to, uh, let me know. Anyone else? Tom, I've got one. Uh, our son Christopher starts as a school teacher tomorrow. He's subbed before, but this is his first year as a full-time sixth grade teacher. So fifth and sixth grade, if you know anything about it, be praying for him, okay? We're we very will, happy that he's working. We will pray and celebrate for Christopher as, and, again, all of our other teachers. But hopefully they have all students just like we were, right? And they should have no problems. Uh, no lightning or anything? Let us go to God in silent prayer. Precious God, <laughs> you brought us a crowd here this morning. You let the children come, and they were not hindered. Lord, we pray your blessing upon the children of our church, the children of our community, Lord. They are our hope. They are our joy. They are our energy, Lord. Thank you for, for blessing us with the privilege of, of being a part of their lives and to pray on their behalf. Lord God, we, we come to celebrate so much in our lives, the, the blessings of our, of our lives, of all those around us, Lord. We can't give you thanks enough for all that you have given to us and, and the privilege of serving you, Lord. Wow, thank you. But Lord, we also recognize that there's a lot of people who are hurting in our church just by looking at our, our prayer list. So many people are grieving the loss of loved ones and and anticipate the loss of their loved one, Lord God, we, we certainly lift them all up to you because uh, we struggle with them, Lord God, and we need to lift them up to your saving grace and your healing presence, Lord. Offer them peace, offer them renewal. And, and this morning, we, we certainly lift up to you uh, the family and friends of John Yaples, the family and friends of Virginia Thompson, the family and friends of Dennis Zelenik, uh, the Burton and Lamb families as they grieve the loss of their loved ones, the family and friends of Mark, the family and friends of Jack Smith, the family and friends of Kathleen Brooks, the family and friends of Anna Felizzi, Lord Carol Miller's family as they, they at this moment surround her in her last days, Lord. We, we just pray. We pray for healing. We pray for comfort. We pray that you wipe away the tears of loss and exchange them for the tears of joy, uh, for everlasting life that, that you have promised each and every one of them as you have promised to us. And the other promise is that there will be a day that we'll all be reconnected with those we lost and all the other saints who have gone on before them in your house not made with hands but eternal in the heavens. Lord God, we pray for those who are recovering from surgery and those who anticipate surgeries as in the days to come. 
We pray, Lord, for all those that, that can't be here, travel blessings upon them if they are traveling. We pray for those who are anxious and frustrated. We pray for those who are part of new beginnings as they, they return back to school or school for the first time and, and they might be homesick or, or lovesick or anything like that, Lord God. We just pray you intercede in their lives with sighs too deep for words to, to give them comfort in knowing that everything's going to be okay. Lord God, we, we lift up to you those who are anxious in their faith and those who are, who are frustrated as well, Lord, that you may reach out to them. Lord, we also lift up to you, Corey and, and, and Jenna, too, Lord God, and, and, and in their circumstance with their baby, Lord, we just, we, man, we just pray that you give them the peace and the comfort in knowing that um, questions will not be answered, but... but in the midst of all that, you are standing in the gap for them um, and will give them strength to endure the, the upcoming days and months and weeks. Lord God, we pray also for Jasmine. We pray for Darlene and Nancy and Brooke and Izzy, for Jamie, for Phil, for Roy. Lord, we pray for Fran and Janet and Jim and Bruce and Dorothy, for Carol, for the churches of Ethiopia, for Bill, for Nick, Lord, and for all the caregivers that care for these people uh, uh, 24 hours a day, Lord. Give them strength and give them hope and give them comfort and also uh, uh, make sure they take care of themselves as well, Lord God. Lord, so many prayers we lift up to you, but you have big shoulders, Lord, and, and uh, we, we, can't, uh, we can't do it on our own. So we give you thanks for hearing our prayers and enlivening our souls. So we pray that your Holy Spirit rests upon all of those we have lifted up to you this day to heal their bodies, to nourish their faith, to set them forth rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we, we give you thanks for being with us, to enliven our souls, to open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. That as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be comforted, that we may be strengthened, that we may be renewed by that same spirit. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, beginning in the 15th verse. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Rules for living. Those ten verses are pretty amazing. In fact, I wouldn't have to preach. I, I could just tell you to go home and, and read that ten times, but I just can't make myself do that here this morning. But I wanted to tell you a story about a man who lived a careful life. He never took any chances. He filled his trunk with a toolbox, three umbrellas, just in case two broke. 
he never gave much because you never know when you might need your funds later on. He didn't travel because he thought he might get into an accident. Didn't reach out to his neighbor because his neighbor might reject him. Didn't do mission because his hands might get dirty. And didn't love because love could hurt too much. So when this man died and his life was spread before the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, he proclaimed proudly, God, here is my life. And God responded, what life? The life we've been given ought to be cherished. It is a joy. It is a hoot. It is incredible uh, that God has given us this amazing gift of life. It needs to be protected as well. So the, the, this letter writer says, don't get drunk with wine. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of resources and good health. Rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill, be intoxicated with something that will last for eternal life, that will change your life and the life of those around you. Just do that kind of stuff. Give thanks to God for giving us the gift of life. And for the time. You know, the most precious gift, second to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is the gift of time. And being able to use that time for the glory of God. Time is an amazing thing. Because... We only have a finite amount of time in this world, and God says, let's use it. Not as unwise people, but as wise. But taking the time in God speak also involves taking a risk. Not foolish risks, not things that, that would uh, endanger our lives or, or necessarily endanger the lives of someone else but taking advantage of all opportunities to give glory to God wherever we find ourselves to share the love of God with our neighbor. Now you heard the reading from Deuteronomy 6, and that's what we're called to do. The greatest commandment is to love God and love our neighbor. So I think it might be first good to know who our neighbor is. And the rule about serving our neighbor. You see, God considers all mission, all love shared with another. No matter what they look like, no matter what language they speak, no matter where they live, no matter where they are from, no matter how they worship, no matter what form of worship, Anyone who is in the need of the grace of God in Christ is our neighbor. Do you know of anybody who is not in the need of God's grace? Everybody. In other words, God does not recognize local mission. To God, all mission is local. To the four corners of the earth, his local mission to God. See, God doesn't say, well, we're just going to stay within our communities. We're just going to stay within our people, within our church. God says, anyone who needs my grace is part of your mission field. And so, saints, that's everybody. No matter what they look like. No matter the language no matter what color of hair, or if they have hair at all. I had to put that in. So that's our neighbor. So having said that, God calls us to be careful how we live. And be careful with the time 
so that we can minister to our neighbor, so we can love our neighbor. Because time is short. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, would gather with his preachers at 4.30 in the morning. Maybe that's why I'm starting to get up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm not sure. I doubt it. But he would get together with his preachers and he'd say many things. But one thing he says, uh, instructed his pastors, was to never trifle away time not spending more time in any one place than is absolutely necessary. I'm not sure whether he, uh, he, was, he was talking about preaching or not, but uh, in other words, don't trifle away your time. Use your time to God's glory. But knowing this, that life is a, in this time that we've been given is a life that requires us to take a chance on another, to use the most precious commodity of time to do the work of God, to do the play of God. Sure, in carpenter speak, I don't know whether this is true or not, Larry, as a carpenter, but I've always used it, is you measure twice and cut once. Is that good? I usually measure twice and still cut three times when I... It would have been better. I mean, those things you have to be cautious about. Those things you have to make sure are, are just right. You don't want to take a chance of, of cutting that board too, too short. Otherwise, you're going to have to get a whole new board and you have to waste that one. No, what, what we need to do, if we are to build a life uh, in Christ, we are called to put away those things that keep us from sharing the love of God. That is, uh, wasting time with things that... that that really have no meaning to God's, uh, to God's mission field. When we start arguing and complaining, or when we start doing things that are contrary to what God has called us to do, we are trifling away our time that God has given us, and that time is, is, is finite. So God is calling us to take a chance. And wise living means spirit-filled living. And spirit living means exploiting the opportunities to share the love of Christ. And I started thinking about Jesus. Maybe we should start thinking about Jesus more often. Well, what if Jesus never took a chance? What if Jesus never took a chance and decided not to reach out to the leper because he might get leprosy? the lepers would never be healed, would they? What if Jesus never took a chance with those who are blind or those who are lame? What if Jesus never stepped out of his comfort zone at all? There probably would not have been a crucifixion. I remember Jesus took a chance when he came back to his home church for the first time. Remember this story? And everybody was real excited to have Jesus back. Hey, this is our hometown guy. He, he was brought up here. He's one of us. And so he gets up from the pulpit. He opens up a, a scripture from the prophet Isaiah and starts preaching. Then he says, you know what? I was in Michigan and the people in Michigan have more faith than you guys. You know what they did? They all got up in a huff. And they led Jesus out back. And were preparing to throw him off a cliff. See, Jesus took a chance. Because he needed to tell the folk that the mission field goes beyond their little world. That there is more to doing the work of, of the church than maybe what the frozen chosen tended to see at that time. He took a chance. What if Jesus never crossed the aisle and talked with people who disagreed with him. In fact, I would say in his day, most disagreed. What if he didn't do that? What if he stayed with his supporters? 
I would venture to say his ministry would have meant nothing. And if you don't take a chance, if you don't take a risk, then there is no profit for the kingdom of God. Or as the old adage goes, if you keep going the same direction you always have, then you'll end up where you've always been. In other words, if you go west on the Ohio Turnpike and all you do is get off on exit 5, that's where you're always going to end up. Now, if you go to exit 4, you're going to see something new, but if all you do is go to exit 5, over and over and over again, you see nothing else. You see the same thing. If we do the same things we've always done, we'll end up being the people we've always been. You know, the biggest lament of denominations and institutional churches is that we're losing members. If you look around, it's not happening at fields. That we're losing influence. Churches don't die, though, saints. If they take a chance and depend on the Holy Spirit. Churches don't die if they take a risk for the glory of God. Churches don't die if we live on the edge and do new things. Churches don't die if we take a chance for the Lord. Faith is always strengthened when we take a risk. I don't remember much about my first year in college. That's a terrible confession to make, I suppose. Glad Abby's not here to hear that. But there is one class that I took, Marketing 101, and there is one phrase that stuck with me the whole time, and and it's called Marketing Myopia. And Marketing Myopia says, you innovate or you die. If you keep on making buggy whips, guess what's going to happen? You're going to die. If you keep on making typewriters, you know those things that kind of separate and you, you put paper in the roller? You keep on making typewriters, guess what? Your business is going to die. If you keep on making roll film, your business is going to die. If the church keeps doing the same thing we've always done, the church is going to die. If we, as Christians, keep doing the same things we've always done, we are going to die without the privilege of serving God and taking a risk for Jesus. I think that's what Ephesians is talking about when they say live wisely. Use time wisely. Because if we don't, what happens, that gives room for the devil to come in and start doing a little bit of work. We've got to be busy. We've got to take a chance. We've got to live on the edge. And the question that we need to ask ourselves, do we care more for where we have been or where we are going? Being careful is to take advantage of the opportunities that God lays before us. There may be some who may want to take you out back and throw you off a cliff. To those, I would say, go ahead, (laughs) give it a try. I don't care! If you're doing the work of God and you're on the edge for Jesus and somebody wants to throw you off the cliff, I don't care. Because what's important is doing the play of God where God has called us to be. Is it hard play? Yes, it is. Doing ministry is difficult work. But it gives glory to God. Saints, we have been given a precious gift, an amazing gift. To be wise disciples and to use our time wisely for the glory of God, live on the edge. Be full of it. 
Try new stuff. Sing songs of praise. Make no room for the devil. Sing it all the time. Thank God for everything. As I said when we came back from the mission trip, in a sermon in July, I said we were joking around every time something happened. We said, thank you, Jesus. Remember that, Sharon? Thank you, Jesus. And we were all laughing, but you know what? It enlivened our soul every time we said that. You start saying that more and more. You thank Jesus for everything. You're living on the edge. You use your time wisely as, as, as wise disciples. We will give praise and thanksgiving to God in all that we do. Do God's work. Have fun with God's work. And when we do all that, that is living wisely and on the edge. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the privilege of serving you. We give you thanks for the time that you have given to us uh, to use wisely. Lord, bless us and, and allow us to give you thanks in all that we do uh, in the time that, that you have given to us. Lord, bless the gifts that we lay now before you, that it may be a blessing to, to all who receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Let's stand up! Then sings my soul My Savior God to me How great Thou art How great Thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. <laughs> Amen. He knows our name. I have a maker, he formed my heart. Before even time began, 
My life was in his hand He knows my name He knows my every thought He sees each tear that falls And hears me when I call I have a father I have a father He calls me his own He'll never leave me No matter where I go He knows my name He knows my every thought He sees each tear that falls And hears me when I call I have a maker I have a maker He formed my heart Before even time began My life was in His hands He knows my name He knows my every thought He sees each tear that falls And hears me when I call Let's do that again He sees each tear that falls And hears me when I call He sees each tear that falls And hears me when I call Amen As we go this week Let's try and put into practice all that we've received from the Lord today. Walk in love and power, and see you next week. Next. It's cute. Okay, I'll call you this week about that stuff. <laughs>